Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, I am going to tackle drum recording. Now, this is not intended to be any sort of a master class in drum recording. There are way better sources out there that you can learn how to do this. Um, you know, some real pros out there that know how to do this. But I am about to uh, do some tracking for a, a song I'm doing for the uh, latest Lewitt mixing contest. And I figured it'd be kind of fun since I uh, haven't set up the microphones and everything yet. It might be kind of fun to take you along. And um, I have a feeling if I try to do this all in one video, it's really going to turn out to be um, super long, probably pretty boring. So I, I think I might try to chop this up into um, kind of short episodes. And maybe I can get one out every day this week. Maybe. No promises. So I've got my room kind of set up already. Uh, I don't have the mics up, but I do have, you know, the drum kit set up here. And, um, you know, once I got the cameras and lights and everything up in here, this room is really kind of overloaded. It's really kind of overcrowded. So I think what I'm going to do is get the kit out of here and just bring it in one piece at a time as I get things kind of set up, get some mics up on the piece of the kit that I'm uh, kind of focusing on in each episode. And that might kind of help kind of keep to a minimum in here because boy, it is really, I, I'm not, a, I'm not the uh, claustrophobic type, but boy, it, it really is kind of closing in on me in here. So, all right, I guess the first thing to do is uh, let me get the kit out of here and uh, let's do that real quick. Okay, with that done, yeah, I feel like I get a lot, got a little bit more uh, room to breathe here. So I'm just gonna start with a kick drum. I think this first episode, I'm just gonna focus on the kick drum and see if I can't get this thing into a shape that kind of fits my uh, kind of vision for the song that I'm doing here. So I think I'm gonna uh, just completely detune it. I'm gonna take one of the, well, I may not have to take the, uh, the heads off. I, I wanna get the uh, dampening out of the inside of it so I can kind of reevaluate how damp it is. It's very dampened right now. And I've been feeling lately in my drum recordings like it's, it, it's a little too damp. So let's get started. So the kit that I have here is a Yamaha Stage Custom Birch. Uh, I really do like this kit. Um, when I bought it, uh, I was concerned about the footprint overall. And so I opted for uh, the smaller sizes of all the kit pieces, which honestly now I kind of regret because that it really only saves a couple of inches. So this is an 18 inch kick drum. So this is not gonna be a big thunderous, just deep and growly uh, kick drum. It's a little more kind of punchy. I, I think that they call these kind of more of like a bop kit or maybe a fusion kit or something. So this kind of small kick drum in the room uh, and to a microphone just isn't gonna generate just kind of that, you know, big kind of rock and roll, deep, huge kick drum sound. But that being said, I think we can still get some pretty usable sounds out of it and uh, fill out the low end of the drums pretty well. So let me get this fill off here so I don't gouge my eye out or anything. So let's get that off of there. I'm gonna get the uh, kick pedal off of it as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is just uh, sit this up on one of his ends here. And I am just gonna detune it because I don't have a lot of experience tuning drums, and I feel like at this point in my kind of development as a drummer, as a, a drum recorder, I need all the practice I can get when it comes to tuning. So uh, let me reach in here and see if I can't get the dampening out of here. I might have to take the head off. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna take the head off. So the damping that I've had in here is, first I put this uh, thing from Evans. It's just this little kind of padded thing. It's Velcro uh, down to the, the shell. It's, it, it does an okay job, you know, for some light damping. Um, the problem is it's not long enough to really, I didn't, I must not have bought the right size or something. Uh, what is this? I don't even really know what it's called. EQ pad from Evans. But the size that I bought apparently just isn't long enough to uh, reach both the batter head and the resonant head. So um, I had put a pillow in there as well, just this little bed pillow. And I feel like it's made it too damp. So I'm gonna see, uh, play around with it a little bit and see what I can't find to just get the drum sounding how I want it to sound. Cause you know, that really is kind of the first rule. And in, 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 if, there, if there are any rules in, in home recording, you know, get it right at the source. Get, get, get the thing that you're recording to sound as good as you can before even sticking a mic on it. All right, now that the rezo head is off, I'm gonna flip this over 
And uh, I am just gonna detune the batter head. And any of you out there that are actually drummers and actually good at tuning drums, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. I am going to fast forward or skip over this part so you won't actually have to listen to me tune each drum because, oh man, it, it's, it's kind of a painful process for me. But got the, the head detensioned, so first I'm just going to go uh, finger tight here. What I've read is a lot of people like the, the batter head to just be tight enough to uh, take the wrinkles out of it, so let me give everything about a half turn and get it to that point. Okay. Okay. You know, that definitely took the wrinkles out. You know, just, um, this is about where I've had it tuned for the longest time. And honestly, it just sounds a little dead, but I, you know, I don't know if that's the dampening inside, if that's the resonant head tuning. Uh, I'm gonna tighten it just a, mm, just a scotch more uh, than this and just kind of see how I like it. Okay. Ooh. Okay, okay. I, I can already actually tell I like that a little better. Just a little bit more tension on it. Okay. All right, time to put the resonant head on, and the, uh, the OCD among you are going to have to turn your heads because um, my porthole, as I found, is I cut it just too low. And so in order to get the porthole higher off the ground so that my uh, kick mic can reach and I'll have a little bit more flexibility uh, in positioning it, I'm gonna turn the head, which is gonna make the logo um, all cockeyed here, but I'm gonna get the porthole higher off the ground by doing that. And oh man, I'm not all that OCD, but that's gonna bug me. <laughs> all right, let me get the hoop in place here. Now, I am definitely not going to go Google how to tune the resonant head because I forgot. I'm definitely not doing that, but I'll be right back. All right, the recommendation is that first just, uh, you know, get the wrinkles out and then uh, tune it once the drum is in position. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done anything with a kick drum. Typically, it's kind of a set and forget kind of thing. So let's do that. Let's give it a round of uh, half twists. Okay, I can't just immediately detect any high or low spots, so uh, I think that's gonna be good for now. So let's get them flipped into playing position here. Okay, I'm gonna get my kick pedal on here. Okay, so I don't have any mics on it yet, of course, so uh, you're just gonna have to hear it through my lavalier mic here, but let me just... Okay, so it, it's not really um, resonating much at all, so... Uh, I'm going to give it just kind of a round of uh, maybe a quarter turn on the rezo head. Um, it, there is a little bit of resonance coming, uh, like not really good <laughs> resonance coming from inside the drum, so I think I will need to dampen it at least a little bit. But, you know, honestly, that didn't sound half bad. Okay, I can hear the uh, head actually kind of resonating a little bit now, so at least it's tight enough to do that. And I hear, I hear that kind of bouncing basketball kind of sound in there. I can hear that from, from here, and I know a microphone is going to hear that very clearly uh, once uh, I start close micing this thing. So I'm going to start with the little, the EQ pad thing here, and see if I can't position this in such a way that uh, maybe it'll just touch that uh, resonant head uh, just enough to kind of muffle it a little bit and also just add a little bit of absorption inside the shell anyways, and uh, maybe that'll help that uh, basketball kind of sound. Okay, like I don't hear it from here. Okay, I'm gonna run with that for now and just kind of see how it goes. So, even though I don't have the rest of the kit set up, let's just stick a couple of mics on this and just kind of see what we, uh, what we end up with here. Okay, my first choice inside of the kick is gonna be an Audix D6. Oh, I just went looking for a clip for an Audix and uh, there was already one on the mic. All right. Just put that back in its bag. 
Um, honestly, I'm gonna have to play around a little bit positioning it, especially now that I have a little bit more flexibility now that my uh, porthole isn't so low. So I think the first thing I'm gonna try is kind of just inside of the, uh, of the porthole here. Uh, as far as I understand, one of the things you want to avoid is having the mic diaphragm like right at the, the kind of threshold of the porthole because the air pressure there is so uh, high every time you strike the kick. I've heard at least that you might be able to damage a mic doing that. Okay, in Reaper, I've created a track. Let's uh, just call it kick in since that's the mic inside of the kick. Now I have that microphone run to one of the preamps on my Behringer ADA8200. And so that's gonna be input mono. And that's gonna be the ADAT1, which is this fella here. So we'll set him to that. We'll arm him for recording. Let me make sure my speakers are down. My headphones are up. And uh, give me just one moment. I'm gonna kind of set the gain to something acceptable here and then we'll listen to it. Okay, the gain is set. Um, it's not clipping or anything. So I might be able to turn it up a little bit, but I think I can get away with it where it is. So. Uh, let me uh, just record a little bit of a snippet here so I can go back and listen to it, see how it sounds. All right, let's hear it. Okay, lots of low end, that's good. But yeah, a little bit of that kind of bouncing basketball sound. Hmm. I have a feeling that's probably why I added the, uh, the uh, extra pillow in there. So yeah, that had lots of, uh, lots of low end to it. Um, it had lots of kind of beater click to it, just as something else to try. Um, let me see what happens if I just kind of stick it uh, much closer to the batter head and see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's, that's got a lot more of that kind of bouncing basketball kind of sound, that, that ring to it. Let's see the original. And then. I don't like that at all. I liked it better at the porthole. Okay, what I did this time was flip the EQ pad around inside there so it's resting against the uh, batter head, so the resonant head. Uh, put the mic back in the porthole and uh, let's see how that sounds. Okay, okay, I think I do like that better. Um, it's still just a little kind of uh, funky sounding. But what I really plan to do here is just use this mic to basically capture the low end. And actually this thing is generating like a pretty uh, admirable amount of low end for such a small drum. But I, I don't really care for the sound of that click from inside the drum. And honestly, on this drum, I have had much better luck miking the outside of the drum. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the D6 here just as an option so when I'm mixing down, I can mix in some of that low end. But I think what I'm gonna do is add an additional mic outside here. So it gets a little bit more of what I like in a kick drum sound, which is a little less uh, click from the beater and a little more just kinda, I don't know what to call it, uh, kind of a pow instead of a click. So I am going to stick an Aventone CV12 on it. Now this is a vocal mic, it's a tube microphone. Uh, I need to remember to turn on the 10 decibel pad. There we go. Let me go get a uh, mic clip for this. All right, hopefully that's gonna be stable enough. Not gonna fall over on me. Uh, I'm gonna kind of point it just kind of towards just a, a big kind of fat juicy part of the, the resonant head here. Okay, so it's, whoop, yeah, eh, man, that might be a little too top heavy. I'm not sure if I'm gonna trust this stand. Okay, and I've got it, I don't know, maybe about uh, between six and eight inches away. I think it's stable enough that I trust it. Let me get her plugged in, turned on. Okay, I got it all plugged in, powered up. Uh, it's plugged into the BAE 1073, and uh, I've got it run into Reaper there. It looks like 
still kind of clipping a little bit. Let's just, let's hear it and uh, see if I need to uh, find a way. I've got it, the BAE turned down as low as I can. Oh, but you know what? I forgot to set the impedance switch on it. Maybe that'll help it just a little bit. Go back up to 1200 ohms instead of 300 on the preamp. Ooh, that did help it. All right, doesn't look like it's clipping anymore. So let me uh, record a little snippet and let's hear the in, the out, and hear them together and see what they sound like. Okay, so I'm gonna mute the in since we already know what that sounds like. Let's hear just the kick out. Ooh, that's picking up a lot of low end too. And it's picking up a lot of room uh, as well, which honestly, I don't think is a bad thing. Uh, let's hear them both together and see if we like that at all. Turn down the out, bring the in up. Okay, okay, I think I can live with that. Um, I'm not just crazy about it though, so, at very least, we have a functioning uh, setup for a couple of mics on a kick drum. I think I can live with it. Um, I don't exactly think I've got a world-class kind of uh, kick sound here, but I think I am gonna go ahead and end the video here. This is already long enough. Um, I am personally sweating bullets here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it through the rest of these videos today like I planned, but I really do wanna open it up to you. And if you are a more experienced drummer, a more experienced, uh, you know, engineer when it comes to recording, miking, tuning, all that stuff with drums, I'm kind of curious to hear your input. You know, if, if you had this drum in this room with these mics, uh, where would you go from here? I don't hate the sound I'm getting, but I do kind of feel like um, it's got room for improvement. So yeah, I definitely invite any advice uh, that you more experienced fellows out there uh, might have. Just uh, let me know. But thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been at least a little interesting. You know, even this, it's not really, you know, framed as a tutorial because I'm not the guy to be learning uh, drum techniques from. I just kind of wanted to bring you along for the ride as I get all this set up and get all the mics set up and record some drum tracks on my own in my own home studio. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll see you again next time.